If you're looking to buy a new home in Austin, Texas, you need to know what you're getting into. Today's video, I'm gonna give you five factors you should consider if you're looking to build a home here in the ATX. What's happening everybody? Ian Grossman here, your realtor in Austin, Texas. Back at it here to bring you the information you need, the information you deserve to keep you in the know on what's happening in the wild Austin real estate market. Remember, if you don't wanna miss out on a thing, hit that subscribe button and I will keep you up to date on everything happening here in the ATX. Don't forget, there's a link in my description for my Austin relocation guide. It'll help you become an expert before you move into the city or before you come visit um, some good ideas on neighborhoods and I even throw in some restaurants, events happening here so you can become an expert, all things Austin. Um, I would love to, the, my videos around new construction today and I would love to hear in the comments if you have dealt with new construction over the last six months here in Austin, Texas, share your experiences, let the people know what you've dealt with because I promise some of the things I say today uh, might be shocking, but they are true. It's what's happening here. So let's jump right into today's topic. Five factors you need to consider if you are looking to buy new construction here in Austin. This one I was going to hit later, but it's important for me to start with number one because if this is all you watch, you gotta know this. Understanding agent representation. Now, when you buy new construction, you go into the sales office uh, at the model home, the sales rep greets you, they give you all the information you need, they're very nice, they're very cordial, sometimes salesy, sometimes a little pushy, sometimes not. However, you need to, you need to remember that they represent the builder, they represent the builder's best interest. Their job is to get you to sign on the dotted line. Now, when I take you to a new construction home or a realtor takes you to a new construction home, our job is not to push you into signing a contract. There are horror stories happening all over the Austin real estate market, especially with new construction, builders canceling contract, builders getting to the finish line and the home still has a lot of items that need to be completed. Or These are basic items, not like a window uh, needs to be replaced and it's gonna take them several weeks. These are items that the builder is just saying, you know what, we're too busy. We don't have the trades to get into your house. Uh, before closing, so you just got to deal with it. That is unacceptable. You got to have a realtor by your side in your corner to represent your best interest in this transaction. Now, one of the interesting things to note is that agent representation doesn't cost you anything. As a matter of fact, there's kind of this myth that if you go to a builder and you don't have an agent, that they'll give you a discount. That is completely false. Couldn't be further from the truth right now. So don't go in with that mindset, throw that thought out the window. Um, you know, some builders have actually started incentivizing, I'm not gonna name any names of builders here, but there's one in particular that's incentivized, incentivized their sales rep to encourage a buyer to not have representation. Now tell me whose best interest they're looking out for if that is the case. If they're encouraging you as a buyer who potentially could be buying their very first home and, and going through this building process for the first time, they're encouraging you to not have someone by your side to represent your best interests. To me, that is a red flag. So understand, contact me, contact your agent, and make sure that they are there with you when you go to these new home builders. In addition to that, um, I wanna to touch on things that we know to look out for in the builder contract and throughout the building process in the different phases, things that we have seen from our experience that we know that could be red flags and that you need to know in order to have a structurally sound home, to have a home that is what you believed you were getting. So make sure you have someone in your corner and I'll touch more on that. You know, I always touch on it in our buyer consultations and understand the myth of going and doing it on your own isn't gonna save you anything. I use the analogy, if an attorney came up to you and said, I'm going to represent you in court for your legal battle, and you said, can't really do it, I don't have the money, and they said, no, 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 I'm gonna do it for free, would you tell them no? See, I left an awkward pause there, so you can think about that. I hope your answer was no, I would not say no. 
Um, so agent representation is so important, especially right now in the current market. Factor number two, understanding the pricing and bidding system that is going on right now. So a lot of builders, well, let's take a step back for a second. Usually buyers in a market, uh, in the normal real estate market over the last few years, if you didn't wanna compete, you didn't wanna go multiple offers, you would go to new construction. And that was your best bet of locking in a price, not competing against other buyers. That doesn't happen now. There are several builders around Austin that are going to these bidding systems. Some, um, for instance, Taylor Morrison, uh, Toll Brothers, are just having people bid on a lot. So they put up a lot price and you bid. You're blindly bidding however much you wanna pay and then you go to the actual, you choose your floor plan, your selections, and that gets added onto the price. Um, DR Horton, all across Austin as a whole, they are doing bidding systems on all their homes. So they're releasing a batch, not every weekend, but some neighborhoods are every weekend, some neighborhoods are, are once a month. They will release homes and say, these are the five or 10 homes available, bid on them. The tough part with that is that you're blindly bidding, you could be bidding against yourself on a home that doesn't have any other bids. So it's important to know, um, to have some insight again from uh, an agent that knows maybe what homes have been going for in weeks prior or releases prior. And just understanding that if you bid over asking price, which you're gonna have to do, um, what that means, what kind of money you're gonna have to bring uh, as a deposit, are you gonna have to make up the difference uh, in appraisal if there's a shortage, you gotta know those things. The other thing is with um, to be built homes, a lot of builders have stopped doing that right now because they're, the lumber shortages, material shortages, labor shortages, prices are skyrocketing. So a lot of them have started building homes as spec homes, which means they choose the lot, they choose the floor plan, they choose all of the selections, and then they're putting a price on it once it gets to the drywall stage. That way they know what their costs are gonna be and they can reflect that in the price to you. So what we see a lot of is you might get locked in for a specific house. However, you're not locked into the price. You need to understand these things going into it. It's different builder to builder. And you have to know what the implications are with the contract you're signing today. Am I locked into this price or am I subject for it to go up? Because sometimes they raise it 10 grand. Sometimes it can go 30, 40 grand or more. You need to be prepared for those things regarding price when buying new construction right now in Austin. Next factor that you need to consider is that we're dealing with longer timeframes and so many more delays when it comes to building. Um, you know, normally when you sign a contract, within about 45 days or so, they, they're getting permits and they schedule a walk where you go out to the property, it's staked out so you can see where the home's gonna be built, and then you go to slab, uh, they pour the slab, framing, so on, so on. Um, usually you're looking at about six or so months for that home to be built, depending on the size, depending on the builder, there's lots of factors there, but generally speaking for an average home, around six months. Now builders are quoting minimum eight to 10 months for the time from when you sign the contract until you get the keys. The thing you need to be prepared though for are delays. Um, if you are in a lease, for instance, make sure you have a backup plan uh, because if you are just projecting that you know your lease ends maybe eight months out and the home's supposed to be built six months out do not count on that happening right now there are so many unknowns i'm seeing it you know we show up for a framing inspection or a framing walkthrough with the builder and they say listen guys uh, we pass our inspection we want to go to insulation and drywall but we can't because we don't have the siding yet and we want to make sure that the house is has siding on it and is dried in before we put insulation in, in case there's any leaks or any of that. So then it's you're on the waiting, you're on the clock for siding. You know we're seeing roof decking, uh, roof shingles, PVC prices are going up, delays are taking place, drywall is taking longer to be delivered. So you got to factor all those things in and understand that the timeline you might have had in your in your mind can kind of be thrown out the window and the builder is not gonna tie themselves to a date in the contract. Um, so be prepared for that when it comes to timing of when your home's gonna be built. Next up is understanding how the wait lists work. 
Now, what I'm seeing is when people reach out to me or if someone's interested in new construction, they might have already started calling builders on their own. Again, what I touched on before, make sure when you call the builder, you tell them that you have an agent, you are working with an agent, won't benefit you again to just do it on your own, but that way they can pair the two together so that if you tell me you're interested in the neighborhood and I reach out, they can say, well, you know, your, the buyer already reached out, they're already on the list. That way I can check in for you and we can stay on top of the builders about where you are on the wait list. You need to know how the wait list is gonna work. Sometimes the sales reps don't even know. They might say, look, our, in this section, we have 60 lots. However, the, the corporate office is only gonna allow us to release five lots this month or 10 lots this month. So understanding how that works and what your place on the wait list means in relation to when you actually might get a home. And then once they get to your name, how long until they start actually building your house? It goes back to the timelines from before, understanding all of that and staying on top of them to make sure your name doesn't fall through the cracks. Last thing I'll touch on with wait lists, if they get to your name, you have to be ready to make a split decision. Um, I know it's a big one to make. However, I've had several clients where their names are, we get the phone call, the magic phone call, and they it's too quick, they don't wanna make a decision. Guess what? Sales reps aren't waiting for you. They're moving on to the next person. I've had several people lose out or miss out on the houses that could have been theirs. The last factor I wanna to touch on revolves around locking in interest rates. You need to understand that when you build a home, you cannot lock in an interest rate until about 60 days out. Now, depending on the lender, I know some of the bigger banks like a Wells Fargo, for instance, uh, might have an extended rate lock option. But going back to what I said before, um, this has happened to clients of mine where they do a 12 month or a 10 month, whatever uh, extended lock option and you pay for that. But keep in mind that if the home is delayed then and that lock expires, you either need to, it, it's gonna expire, you lose the money you paid, or you're gonna have to keep extending, piggybacking on the home being built. You don't wanna get into that position. So know that today's rates, which you know in mid-May right now, we're down at the low, uh, low threes, in some cases, depending on the lender, depending on your credit, under 3%. But that might not be the case when the home's built in 2022 or the end of 2021. I told you in a couple videos ago that um, I'm building a home in New Braunfels and it's likely gonna be finished in late 2021. I'm rolling the dice, hoping that interest rates don't go up. From the signs we're seeing, there shouldn't be a huge uptick, but I guess you never know. It's a risk you gotta take and risk if you're right on the fringe of qualifying, you need to know that a drastic raise in interest rates could affect your qualification on the home. So be prepared for that to happen. Now, there are lots of components when it comes to new builds. That's what I'm here for. That's what your, if you, if it's not me that's your agent, you have another agent, um, that's what they're there for. Ask questions, understand they are in your, in your corner, I'm in your corner to represent your best interest when it comes to new construction, prepare you for what to expect. If you have questions, always feel free to reach out. Again, I'd love to see in the comments your experiences with new builds here in Austin, the days of negotiating builders and getting them down on price, those are gone. Um, however, one day we'll get back to normal and we might see that happen again. Um, remember to subscribe if you wanna stay up to date on all things happening in Austin real estate. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. We'll catch you on the next one.